Continuation, Application of the Perfect Redemption Plan, Part 5, page 95. Chapter 1-2, Revelation Gifts. 1-2a, The Word of Wisdom. The word of wisdom is when a person is facing a problem and does not know the answer, and the Holy Spirit gives the answer or the way out. It can be in the spiritual life or in the secular life. It is the Holy Spirit who gives that word of wisdom. It might sound foolishness to the world and the carnal mind, but it is the wisdom of God. And if we decide to act on it, God will move on our behalf. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the lawyer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God the world by wisdom did not know God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 20 to 21 To be able to flow in the word of wisdom, you must be familiar with the word of God and the Holy Spirit will bring it to your remembrance. When I was in my last year in high school, there were people who were repeating that class. Since I was a class representative, I was also teaching some of the disciplines, because the teachers were not being paid by the government, therefore they were going to private schools and abandoning the public schools. So the pupils who were repeating were about 30% of the pupils. They were not coming to classes, and especially when I was the one teaching. So they were only coming twice a week, the days we had mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology. I did not want them to fail their A-levels again, so I prayed to God, What can I do to have them come to class? So, one day they were punished because they were not coming to classes. They asked them to weed out a part of the high school playground. That part they asked them to weed out was turned into toilets because the normal toilets were blocked and clogged, so people were going into those weeds to urinate and have bowel movements, to poo or defecate. So other pupils were making fun of them and were rejoicing over the fact that they were being punished and that they had been given a humiliating task. So the Lord told me, this is your opportunity to win them over. If you go and work with them, knowing that you have not been punished, they will see that you genuinely care for them. So the Holy Spirit brought to my remembrance a scripture that Jesus, who was not a transgressor, was numbered among the transgressors and suffered the same punishment with the criminals. Luke 22 verse 37 So on the day they were supposed to accomplish that punishment, they brought hoes, machetes, shovels and gloves, so that they would not touch the human excrement. So the pupils who were not punished were standing opposite that playground to watch the humiliation and laugh. So I walked straight to where those who were punished were, and I selected for myself the spot that was full of human excrement, and I started to weed out with my bare hands. They were all amazed. They asked me, You have not been punished. You are always in all the classes. Why are you helping us? And you did not even bring gloves or a hoe, but are using your bare hands. I told them, We are in this thing together. It does not matter if you do not come to classes or come to the classes I teach, but since your name is written in my class registry, if you are punished, I am punished with you. We go through tough times together, and we will also rejoice together when we all pass our A-levels. When the other pupils who were watching and making fun saw what I did, it convicted them, so they all came and helped to weed out that playground. I washed my hands with lots of soap after that. People will say, you are stupid, Jerry. You are even putting your hands in urine and human excrement. Yes, if you look at it this way, your carnal mind is true. I went to see my friend, his wife and their baby Isaac. I was in a suit and holding the baby in my hands, and the baby had a bowel movement. It was too much, the diaper could not contain it. 
so both the urine and excrement were on my suit and on my hands, but I was not even one bit angry. So people will tell me, it is different, the urine and excrement of a baby are not the same as those of a grown-up. It is just as you see them. Peter says, I, brothers and sisters, could not speak to you as spiritual ones, but as to fleshly, as to babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with solid food, for you were not yet able to bear it, nor are you able even now. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 1 to 2 So, even spiritually we have believers that God places in our lives. We have to change their spiritual diapers. We are to even put our hands in their spiritual urine and excrement because we see them as our spiritual babies. People will know that you truly care for them when you stick with them, not just in the good times, but even in their bad times, even in their mess. After that day, we weeded out the high school playground, everything changed. There was peace in that classroom. Everybody came to all the classes. I even made them come on Saturdays and Sundays. Seven days a week they were in school preparing for that A-level. God so blessed us. We had the best result in the whole nation and our principal of the high school was promoted into a bigger high school by the Minister of Education because of the results of our class. In another instance, the sister called me, and she had a business, but she was struggling to get clients. She would call them, but they would tell her they were already working with another company, and they did not need the services of her company. So when we prayed, the Lord told her in a vision what to do to get the contracts. So I told her what that part of the interpretation of her vision was. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Proverbs 18 verse 16 So she acted on that and prepared gifts and gave them to those companies. People will tell you, you are stupid. You do not have a contract with those companies. Why are you giving them Christmas gifts? It is companies that are in business with them that should be giving gifts to them. What if you just lose your money and none of them call you back? Trust God for the strategies that He is giving you. God started to open those companies one by one, and He is still opening them and giving her more words of knowledge and words of wisdom. David was fighting the Philistines, and God gave him the strategy or word of wisdom as to how he would be able to defeat them. 2 Samuel 5 verse 19 to 25 And David inquired of Jehovah, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And Jehovah said to David, Go up, for I will surely deliver the Philistines into your hand. And David came to Baal Perizim, and David struck them there, and said, Jehovah has broken forth on my enemies before me, like the breaking forth of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place the breaking of Baal. And they left the images there, and David and his men took them away. And the Philistines came up again and spread themselves in the valley of the giants. And David inquired of Jehovah, and he said, You shall not go up, but go around behind them and come upon them over across from the weeping trees. And it shall be, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the weeping trees, then you shall strike. For then Jehovah shall go out before you to strike the army of the Philistines. And David did so as Jehovah had commanded him, and he struck the Philistines from Geba until you come to Giza. So you see, David always learned to inquire of the Lord, even though he was an expert in war. The first time God told him to go, there was no specific strategy, and he got the victory. The second time, God gave him a word of wisdom. God knows what the plans of the enemy or the opposition are. So, if we inquire of him, he will give us a word of wisdom. In every arena of life, God has a word of wisdom for you.
There are great testimonies of what the Word of Wisdom did in some famous people's lives, but I decided not to share them. Why? Because as much as possible I want to stick to what Paul told us by the Holy Spirit. We will not boast beyond measure, but within the limits of the sphere which God appointed us, to reach even to you. For we do not overstretch ourselves as though not reaching to you. For we also came to you in the gospel of Christ, not boasting beyond measure in the labours of others, but having hope that the growing faith among you will be increased. We shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere to overflowing, to preach the gospel in that beyond you, and not to boast in another man's sphere of accomplishment. But he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 13 to 17 So you now understand why I give my small examples that are about what God did in my personal life or the life of the people that God has entrusted to me to share the gospel with. I know it's only the beginning and God will do more miracles in my life and in the lives of people who are reading these Bible studies. I would rather share a testimony written in the Bible than take a fancy testimony that I heard and sometimes a person was just magnifying it to impress hearers. I know the testimony that I record in these Bible studies are true and the testimony of the people that closely work with me are true. John says, when we had recorded their personal experience with Jesus in the book, this is the disciples who testifies of these things and wrote these things and we know that his testimony is true. John 21 verse 24 The word of wisdom is in every area of your life. When I was in primary school and high school, I used to confess, the Lord shall make you the head and not the tail, and you shall be above only, and you shall not be beneath. Deuteronomy 28.13 So when I had my homework, I would work, and when I did not know the answer, I would ask God, Please give me the answer, Lord. And I would go to sleep, and sometimes I would wake up at 4 a.m., and I would have an idea of how to solve that mathematics, physics, or chemistry problem. It was the word of wisdom that God gave me to solve the problem. People have received inventions by word of wisdom. God will give you a formula or a design. Moses received the blueprint of the tabernacle of meeting and of all the utensils of the service. David received the blueprints of the temple that Solomon built. Joseph gave the interpretation of the two dreams of Pharaoh about the famine that was about to come on earth for seven years. That was the word of knowledge. But after giving the interpretation, which is the prophetic revelation, the Spirit of the Lord gave Joseph a word of wisdom, so that if Pharaoh acted on that word of wisdom, the famine would not affect his country, but he would greatly prosper during that famine. So he said to Pharaoh, Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up a fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown you all this, there is none so discreet and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and according unto your word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, 
I have set thee over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it on Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Genesis 41 verse 33 to 42 The word of knowledge and the word of wisdom must work hand in hand. It is not good enough to know what is about to happen to us, but we must know what to do so that we will not be affected. That is the purpose of the word of wisdom. Many prophetic people have wonderful dreams and visions, and by words of knowledge from the Holy Ghost they give their interpretations. If I know what happened in the past, or what will happen in the future, I am one step ahead of my enemies. But if I do not know what to do with that knowledge of the past or future that has been given to me, I will suffer the same fate the unbelievers do. I must have the word of wisdom to deliver myself and the people around me from what is about to happen. There was also famine in the days of Isaac. Isaac wanted to go down to Egypt, for in the days of his father Abraham, when there was famine in the land, God gave him the wisdom to go down to Egypt. Abraham obeyed, and he prospered in Egypt and became the richest man in the east. Genesis 12 verse 10 to 20 and Genesis 13 verse 1 to 4. The word of wisdom that worked for your father or for your uncle or for someone you know might not be the word of wisdom for you. So please inquire of the Lord like David did and let him tell you what your word of wisdom is, where you should invest in the time of famine and you will prosper tremendously and become very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold like Father Abraham. So Isaac also wanted to go down into Egypt like his father, but the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you, for to you and your descendants I will give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. Genesis 26 verse 1 to 3 this word of wisdom that God gave to Isaac helped him to know what to do in the midst of the famine. Yes, Isaac experienced some resistance in that land, but at the end he won, for he acted on the word of wisdom of God. Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Genesis 26 verse 12 to 14 Obey the strategy God gives you and watch out. The blessing of the Lord will come upon you and will overtake you. People around you will envy you. To be continued.